Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Splicer.tv and I'm here to show you guys how to use Centrix for Cinema 4D. Centrix is a plugin for Cinema 4D that allows you to import scanned LiDAR data. Now LiDAR data acquisition can be achieved from um, actual scanning of data using a commercial scanner or you can obtain LiDAR data from many open sources online such as open topography. So in order to access Centrix within C4D, the first thing you want to do is to go under Window, Content Browser, and you should see a preset called Centrix. Now within that uh, preset, you'll find the Centrix Plot Expresso node. So just double click on that and it will create a null with a Centrix Plot Expresso tag hooked up. Now we just need this object to import the data within C4D. So from the Centrix Plot Expresso node, we'll need to specify a file. So I have two sets of scans here. One is from the Faro Focus 3D, and one is from Open Topography. So let's start with the Open Topography data set. Now, some of the options here allow you to optimize the import. So what you can do with the Process Every Nth option is to process every number of points in the data set. So you can use this to skip over points if you don't want to load up all of the points in the data set. This is incredibly useful if you end up having a scan that has 100 million points and you just want to uh, process every 1,000 points. So you end up with fewer data and fewer points to just to work with. So since this scan is fairly light, I'm going to keep this option set to 1. Um, the scale factor allows you to scale the data setup um, to match a much more uh, realistic scale within C40. It's just a post-processing scale that you can set directly in here, or you can scale afterwards if after you import. And the z-axis up will initialize the data set and plot everything where z is the up coordinate. Now this is incredibly useful if the scan was done in a specific package that uses Z as the up axis. The center points option is also checked on by default and what that does is it takes the data once it's been plot and just centers it to the origin. Uh, you may want to turn this off if you're dealing with data that has um, multiple pieces or multiple segments because you want um, not you don't want all the points to be centered. You don't want all the tiles to be centered. So if you do a scan where your information or your export is your export of points is all cut up into several sections, you might want to turn this off to ensure that everything will be stitched together correctly. So once we've verified all the options we need, let's just click on solve points and you'll see that was a fairly quick process. So by default you'll see a Centrix object was created. And um, if you look in the viewport, there's nothing here, but there actually is information. So if you go into the point selection mode, you can see that we actually have points here that represent the data we scanned. So if we click back on the Centrix object and hit Command I, you can see that we have plotted 76,000 points. And the data is represented as geometry. So what you can do with this is you can go in here and select portions of the data you want to modify. So you can delete or move points as you wish. Uh, this is incredibly useful if you need to filter out stray points or if you need to just isolate a section of your scan. So this Centrix object can be manipulated just like you would with geometry. So let's switch back to model mode. And um, another question is, well, how do we visualize this data as points in the renderer? So I can't render the Centrix object by default. So what you'd want to do is convert this data into particles. Now an efficient way to do this is to 
use the MoGraph matrix object. And for this purpose, I'm going to uncheck the display flags. And what you want to do now is set the mode to object and generate thinking particles. Now we're going to drag our Centrix object into the object parameter here. And you'll immediately see that we've created our representation of our scan as thinking particles. Now an additional thing you might want to do is change the display of these particles. So I generally like to use the dots display mode to visu better visualize the data. Now I prefer to use Arnold as a alternative because it uh, has a very powerful shading network and we can do some interesting things with the data such as shading each point based on height. So you can create some kind of visualization of elevation. But first let me show you how to set this up uh, straight out of the box with Cinema 4D for point rendering. So what we want to do now is create a particle geometry node and we want to grab our thinking particle settings and make sure we plug in the all group into the particle group for our particle geometry object. Next we're going to set the particle geometry object to use a hair rendering tag and we're going to create a hair shader. Let's just apply this. Now before we render we want to set the color of these points to be white And we're going to use the thickness control here to adjust the point rendering. Just take a render straight out of the box and you'll see that we've achieved the rendering here, but it doesn't look quite interesting because our point size is not correct. So let's change the root size to 0 0.1. And now we have a better representation of our points. Now we'll show you guys how to render with Arnold. So let's delete this particle geometry object and let's go up to plugins menu here and we have a C4D2A section and now let's create a Arnold TP group. And what this allows us to do is render specific uh, group as points. Let's also go here and create a Arnold shader. I'll use a standard for this uh, example. Uh, next we'll need a light. Let's go in here and just create a Arnold point light. and you'll begin to see our data is being rendered here as spheres. And we can adjust the scale just from changing the multiplier here. So I'm just going to choose 0 0.1. Let's take a re-render. And now we have another representation of our points. Now let's look at bringing in some more heavier geometry. So I'm going to go back here and create a new Centrix plot object. And let's load up something much more heavier from our Faro Focus 3D scan. And I'm going to make sure we process every 50 points. Or let's just say every 5 points. And you'll begin to see our data is being solved down here. This is a 20 million point solve and I'm processing every five points. Processing is fairly fast because the file is being streamed rather than being completely loaded up. 
So you can immediately see we're gaining some performance boost by skipping every five points. Now the data set is completely loaded up. Let's take a quick look. And you can see it's rather small here. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Let's check how many points we plotted. So we plotted 4 million points. So you can see 4 million points is quite a bit, and it will uh, drag in your viewport a little bit. Let's take a look at how we can load these up as particles. So I'm going to go here and create a new matrix. And we're going to set this to object and generate thinking particles from it. I'll drag the centrix object in here. And you should see our data has been plotted, but some of it is cut off. And the reason that happens is because there's a hard limit on the number of thinking particles displayable in the viewport. So what you can do is go under Simulate, Thinking Particles, and change the settings. And what I want to do here is force it to uh, have a max limit of 5 million. Now I just toggled the redraw or in the enabled state of our matrix object and you can see it's just updated. So it's still, still fairly heavy but we have four plus million points in here. And these can be also rendered the same way with the hair render or you can do it with Arnold. So I'll just go back in here and I'm going to create the Arnold TP group. Now if you want to optimize how you're displaying these points, one thing I would recommend is to um, create a proxy of this data set. If, you're just, if you just want to model around this data and you don't want to directly render it, if you're just using the LiDAR data as a guide of some sort, I would load up far less points and just use that as a, as a template for what I'm building on. Let's also set our renderer to Arnold. And the spheres are quite big, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that from 0 to 5. So there we go. Here's our LiDAR data rendered as spheres within Arnold Renderer. And you wouldn't be able to get this data inside of C4D without the use of Centrix. So thank you for watching, and I'll be showing you guys more tutorials and more tricks for optimization and rendering with Centrix.